welcome to this edition of our podcast, Ask the Expert. My name is Nina Sveblova. I am technical manager at Crosby Foibu, part of the Crosby Group. Today we'll be answering a question coming from an anonymous source. And the question is, I hear about fatigue being important in lifting and mooring applications. What is it and what can I do to avoid having issues with fatigue? This is a very good question and um, it is important uh, because um, we always be having uh, fatigue in all uh, engineering applications. Fatigue is one of the limiting factors uh, which influence the service life of all components and um, fatigue is basically the weakening of the material uh, due to cyclic loading or dynamic loading of the components. And uh, what is important to take away is that fatigue can occur even at um, loads lower than working load limit. There are three stages to fatigue. Uh, first stage is crack initiation. It follows by uh, crack propagation and ultimately um, you, you can have uh, fatigue failure. Um, what is happening? Um, in the crack initiation uh, phase, the material is experiencing high stresses. Um, normally it is a very localized process and at this process material um, accumulates fatigue damage uh, on the microscopic level and uh, micro cracks um, appear. Um, then um, microscopic cracks, um, they present a stress concentrator and at the tip, and we enter the crack propagation phase. At the tip of the crack, plastification of the material happens and uh, micro damage is accumulated um, quicker and then grow, uh, the crack grows further with every cycle. And finally, after the crack has reached a critical size and the rest uh, cross section is not able to hold the load, um, we have catastrophic failure of the component. So how many uh, repeated loads or um, loading cycles my component is able to withstand? Uh, this depends on the application, of course, um, but if we are talking about uh, lifting equipment, many standards prescribe 20,000 cycles at 1.5 working load limit. Um, this uh, may seem like a random uh, number at random loading conditions, but let us have a look at the so-called um, SN curve. This curve shows basic, uh, basic uh, behavior um, of metallic materials under dynamic loading conditions. Uh, the y-axis shows the um, stresses and uh, the number of cycles are plotted on the x-axis. Um, the very left point in the curve corresponds to the uh, breaking strength of the material. Um, basically, in this state, the component is able to survive one, um, one half of a cycle. And on the right hand side, um, we can see endurance limit, so called. It corresponds to the load level uh, in the component um, at which the part can survive forever, uh, which means that the fatigue damage is um, accumulating not quickly enough or not strongly enough um, to initiate a crack. All the points in between on this black curve uh, show the loading conditions at which uh, the component has only a limited um, service life. Um, if we have a look at 1.5 working load limit stress level, uh, then we see that um, it corresponds uh, approximately to 20,000 uh, loading cycles. At the same time, this component at working load limit um, is very unlikely to fail um, at two, after 2 million um, or before 2 million cycles. This means that these both uh, loading conditions are representative of one each other. 
And um, the advantage of testing at 1.5 working load limit is that you are able to achieve or to assess the fatigue performance of your component in um, a very reasonable amount of time. So um, what are the other factors influencing fatigue resistance? A part of the stress uh, level and uh, properties of material. Um, surface finish is a very important factor for the fatigue resistance. Um, as I mentioned before, um, the fatigue damage accumulation uh, starts at the stress concentration points and um, very rough surface can um, give a good ground as a stress concentration for stress concentration on the surface. So apart from the uh, load level, and um, properties of the material, what else um, influences the fatigue resistance of the component? Uh, one important point is residual stresses, uh, which are caused by manufacturing process. Basically, um, anything which causes high stress concentration, uh, we talked about the localized process of um, fatigue damage accumulation. So anything which causes local uh, high stresses uh, in the material uh, influences the fatigue performance of the material. Complex geometry, uh, abrupt changes of the geometry like notches, holes, grooves um, are stress concentrators um, which uh, will accumulate um, uh, fatigue damage. Also mechanical damage uh, to the surface of the part. Um, uh, may cause notches and they are also stress, concentrator, stress concentrators. Um, this is on a macroscopic level. On the microscopic level, um, surface finish or um, corrosion uh, on the surface may also um, cause uh, these uh, crack initiation points. The next graph visualizes the um, effect of corrosion on the uh, steel and um, performance in the fatigue. This, the uh, curve A shows uh, ideal laboratory testing conditions and B uh, shows um, steel affected by corrosion. This causes lower ultimate strength of the component, fewer cycles at the same stress level and no endurance limit. So to summarize, Fatigue will always be present in any application, uh, mooring or lifting. Um, you can take steps in order to reduce risk of fatigue and uh, protect yourself, your co-workers um, and your property. Um, some precautions are be sure you use high quality material, uh, which is designed and tested for the application. Um, high quality material means also no inclusions, no voids, small grain size, high ductility properties, uh, high impact toughness. Um, this will increase fatigue, fatigue resistance of the material. Adopt your um, inspection intervals and inspection procedures uh, to the usage of the part. Um, Corrosion protection is another uh, point. Uh, anything you do uh, to protect the surfaces um, of your parts will increase fatigue resistance and reduce risk of fatigue. Um, for example, deep gal galvanizing. Um, it will make the parts safer. Um, the operations, if they are taking place, at a working load limit, then you may consider using a one size higher um, for the equipment in order to increase the overall strength of the component. And always use recommendations of the manufacturer for liability and safety purposes. Thank you for submitting today's question and we see you again on Ask the Expert.